today is the first day that these two are actually wanting to play outside because it is a lot a lot warmer it doesn't it's not i wouldn't say it's warm but it's warmer and they are enjoying themselves go on porty i've not even got a coat on <laughs> Yes, I am in the exact same outfit as I was in the last vlog, but you know what I'm like. I like to wear things that make me feel comfortable and happy, basically. Um, but I am picking up my camera straight away after that vlog and um, ending my month-long unintentional shopping ban, basically, and opening some items that I've purchased with you because I've had these a couple of days now and I have been itching to get into them and I always like to unbox things with you because I always wonder whether to keep the actual unboxing in but I really like you guys to see my first impressions of things when I get them out. I think that's really important because A, first impressions of items like in terms of quality and expectations etc etc I think is really important but also like marrying things up with how they change when you put them on so whether you compromise on something here but because they fit really nice here it works well so i hope that it's okay that i do the unboxings with you i i personally really enjoy watching unboxings and then try-ons so i hope let me know if you enjoy them who knows i'm working with farfetch on this video but as you know i've shopped at farfetch for such a long time so you don't even need me to go into that i do obviously have my usual uh, code that you can use to get 10 percent off at checkout i'll pop it on screen for you super easy to remember and um i'll pop all of the information about how long it's valid for etc etc in the description box down below because i hate like muddying the water but i am so excited for um these pieces because i've really like i said in my last video i've been like honing that sort of classicness that I love and just picking some bits that I know are going to stay in my wardrobe for a long time. So um, without further ado, let's start opening the first like unboxing of 2022, which I'm quite impressed with myself, okay? And I hope that you're going to like cheer me on. I know that there'll be the, the, the negative Nellies that will be like, oh, you think you've moved a mountain? But baby steps, baby steps. Oh, let's get into the first one. So obviously it's a bit of a strange time to shop at this time of year. Um, there's little bits of sale still ongoing. The season is changing or starting to. As I said, today is quite a mild day. So um, it's sort of that weird in-between stage, but these are hopefully things that um, will work for now, work for the future and work for next season. That's kind of my process. So this first piece is from a brand that you know that I already love a lot. This is from N Peel. And basically, I really wanted a beautiful kind of Merlot colored scarf to go with my Purdy field coat because it's got this kind of color running throughout. And this is just a nice, it's not too big. It's not like a blanket scarf or anything like that. It's a good one for sort of wrapping round, getting some extra water. It actually goes really nicely with this outfit, to be perfectly honest. Nice little colour block there. Um, it's so incredibly soft, but also lightweight, because I can find that sometimes scarves can be quite heavy on the neck. And so this one's a really nice lightweight one that you can just kind of wrap around. It'll look lovely with my field coat, like I said. And the colour, to be honest with you, look at the richness and you can see the shininess, like this is just beautiful. I actually didn't look at the fabric of this. 100% cashmere. But that is a very soft cashmere. Wow. So very, very happy with that from the outset. That is exactly what I wanted. And in England, it doesn't really get, um, it doesn't get like hot really fast. So you have like a lot of toing and froing with weather and days and, and temperatures. So I could end up, knowing England, I could end up wearing this in May. <laughs> I think I remember one year it like snowed in July or something ridiculous like that. So 
Um, yeah, anything can happen in England. And this is the NPL scarf on with my Purdy Field coat. And it is a perfect match. I'm very, very happy with it and I feel like it's the perfect scarf for this. The cream ones weren't quite working with the colour of the collar. Um, and this is just a bit of a smarter country coat, I guess. I'd probably wear it with different boots as well, um, rather than these ones. But this is the softest scarf I think I've ever owned. And it is such beautiful quality. I'm very, very happy with this. Just to show you it a little bit closer up, the rich tone of it against the collar of the purdy coat. And the structure of this coat is just another level. It really is. It's so wonderful. You can feel my... My... Uh, <laughs> my uh, tissues in my pocket from when I go on dog walks in it, but very happy with this. Next up, oh, we have, oh, this is definitely a spring summer purchase, which I think you will all appreciate. So these are some linen sage green high-waisted wide leg trousers and to be quite honest with you i am obsessed they look like the perfect length great for styling with white blouses but giving something a different feel a much more earthy feel uh, and a more natural feel but a really great like thickness as well so for spring these will work lovely i am over the moon with these i think they're absolutely perfect I can't wait to try them on. They look like a really good length as well. But you know I love a wide leg linen trouser in the summer months. So when I saw them in sage green, they had my name all over them. So these are the sage green Zimmerman trousers on. I've popped them with an Erden blouse that has this kind of beautiful fern print, but also has really nice different shades of green throughout. I think these are wonderful. I definitely could have done with them being slightly longer. I think I went for the petite ones, but I would say they're absolutely perfect for me if I was gonna wear flats with them all the time. I wouldn't necessarily say that I could wear any kind of heel, so I've teamed it with just some flat sandals um, and a tan bag, but the shape of them are absolutely beautiful. I think these are such a perfect transitional linen trousers because actually these are so thick i'm warm in these and it's quite a cold day today so i definitely think that these are staying very much in my wardrobe because this is a very lydia millen-esque outfit <laughs> some of these items i think potentially are in the sale like i think i got the um n peel scarf it ended up being like under a hundred pounds. I don't, I don't, I might have made that up, but I don't think I did. Next up, so this is a brand that I've seen on Farfetch before, but I've not actually purchased from. But if you watch my last video, you'll know that I have a bit of a thing for striped. Like I love a classic pinstripe shirt and that really classic summery kind of pinstripe vibe. Um, and these two pieces were, what I just, I thought they were absolutely beautiful. So this is a brand called Eliz Elisabetta Fran Franchi? Franchi, oh gosh, I just, I'm terrible, aren't I? Um, but Elisabetta Franchi. Franchi, 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 who knows? Um, this is a high neck, ruffle sleeved, not cropped, but waist top. So this will look lovely with some high waisted linen trousers, just to add, a bit of a different feel. It is completely backless as well, aside from the tie. Um, and I just, I loved it. It's got pleating detail to uh, the front. More like gathering rather than pleating, uh, like specifically, but I loved the high neck. I loved the classic pinstripe to it. Okay, I think that this outfit is probably a favorite. Definitely spring summer-esque, but I've tried to make it a little bit more spring because um, going with the darker navy trousers, I think works really well. Um, but I have got lots of white linen trousers and I've actually ordered some cropped linen trousers from Chloe as well to arrive, which I think will look really lovely in like high summer, holiday season with this particular look. This is so smart and so elegant. 
that I feel so comfortable in this. These trousers are actually Caramillans, so um, I don't know if they still do them, but they were uh, in my first my first ever edit. Also, this top would look amazing with my bespoke suit from Suster and Hicks, and I just feel brilliant. This blouse is just a bit of a feminine touch on workwear. I've not done it all the way up, by the way, just because my arms were aching trying to get it done up. I would also say that this fits easier than the dress. The dress is, has more of a snug fit, whereas this, obviously, with the waistband, just makes it really, really kind of, you just cinch it in as much as you want. But I love this. I've actually ordered some tan shoes as well to complement my Birkin because I think that the two together would be really lovely. And I love white, blue and tan for like the summer, spring season. I think it's so elegant and so timeless. And I love this look. <laughs> and I loved it so much that I got the dress as well. I saw the dress version and I thought, Either or. Now, it looked short on the website, but I think that she was just very tall because this is the perfect length for me. Again, same kind of concept. It has the beautiful high neck, but the uh, kind of fluted ruffle sleeves, backless, tie waist. This with tan accessories, like my tan Hermes sandals, my uh, Birkin, those kinds of things. They're basically how I'm going to try and, um, how I intend to style it up as well, so yes. Love it, and quite a full skirt as well, which I love as well, but just a classic, like a real classic fabric with a more modern kind of twist to it. Okay, so this is the Elisabetta Ferretti dress, I think it is, and I love it. This is definitely more of a kind of high summer, holiday season dress for sure, because the backless, uh, detail on this is definitely going to make you cold at this time of year but I couldn't pass up how wonderful and elegant and timeless this is I just think it's got such a beautiful shape such beautiful pleating to it the pinstripe is incredibly timeless and the ruffles just add a little bit of something something to it the whole way that I envisioned wearing this was with tan accessories so I've teamed it with my Birkin and my tan sandals but you could also pop some like court shoes with it or um, Valentino rock studs for a little bit of height. But I am gonna save this dress 110% for holiday and summer here in the UK. I would also love to see this as a midi because I always feel just that little bit more elegant in a midi dress. But for the most part, this is absolutely beautiful and such a timeless look. Like this is up there with a white dress because uh, pinstripes for me just don't really ever go out of style so I'm very 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 happy with this. That was two from a brand that I have not purchased from before. These two in here are the pieces that I am very very excited about. These are some real classics if I can get into them. <laughs> so I told you about the classic black coat that I was looking for. That's in here but I also saw a really lovely jacket as well, which I quite liked the silhouette of. It was kind of a bit more nipped in and hourglass shape, but I have been itching to try this on. Oh, wow. It's got nice broad, oh, wow. The only thing I wasn't expecting was the large cuffs like this, so the cuffs are really kind of almost like a flute sleeve, but I really like the shape on the waist and on the shoulders as well. It's really nicely fitted, especially for a broad shouldered girl. You cannot see my uh, <laughs> big arms. That is really lovely. Really, really lovely. Love this. Oh my goodness. Oh gosh, I actually really didn't want to love it either. <laughs> but, a lovely classic. Okay, this is the Kate blazer on, and I feel absolutely incredible in this. And this is just one of the many ways that I think that I would end up wearing this, because it's longer line, wearing it with leggings, with a really nice knitwear piece underneath, just makes it look so, so timeless and just makes it a much easier to wear kind of look. I like wearing tailoring 
but dressing it down a little bit because the tailoring makes me feel elegant, but the, the dressing it down makes me feel more comfortable. So this is slightly like a modern twist on a blazer, but you'll see it fits me perfectly on the shoulders. So I'm really, really happy about that. Little bit tight across the back, but it is a very, very elegant and beautiful shape. What I also love is the fact that the buttons are covered. And a lot of the time with jackets and blazers, I'm really struggling against wanting to wear one hardware bag and the, the coat being a different one. So this really did attract me to the piece and I have had endless compliments of it already. So I put it up on my stories and everyone was like, where is that jacket from? It is an investment piece, but I think you can't go wrong investing in A, tailoring, B, something black if you like wearing black, um, and something that you feel amazing in. Those are the things that I look for investment pieces. I don't think of investment pieces as something that's going to make money in my wardrobe. I think that it's going to get an investment from me in the fact that I'm going to wear it a lot, it's going to be versatile, and it's going to stand the test of time. So just to clear anything up when I'm talking about that kind of thing, it's more of like a piece that's going to earn its keep and um, stay in my wardrobe for a very, very long time. And this is definitely one of those pieces. I find Kate a really interesting brand as well because some of their items will be like really out there and some of them are like really lovely and classic. I find it's like there's like no in between. Really interesting. So this is the coat. Now, unfortunately, I missed out on it in my normal size but if that size is anything to go by i might be okay so it's got this really beautiful fur collar which attracted me to it because it's removable and it can just be a classic black coat or it can have a little bit of interest in this faux fur collar this is not real fur this is very good looking faux fur so obviously I'll show you in the cutaways as usual, but it just looks so lovely and classic. I couldn't, I couldn't pass it up. Now, is it going to fit? Is it going to be too big? So it's got the same sleeve. Oh, it's got the same sleeves as the blazer. So slightly fluted sleeves. Mm. This collar is very strange. So the arms are very long on it, but this is it on. I do think I, I probably would have been better on the waist with the six rather than the eight, but on the shoulders, like in terms of across the back, I've got more movement. I would be able to get more layers underneath this, but do we love it enough? to keep it, that is the question, because these sleeves need to be shortened, which is, a, this coat is a lot of money, like this is a very, very expensive coat for me. And I'm gonna take the fur off, because it's only attached by little buttons, and see how it sits, because it feels like it's not really been put on properly. Hmm. This collar seems very bizarre. I can't work it out. It's almost like it's been stored wrong. I feel like I was absolutely yes on the jacket. The coat is throwing me somewhat. Okay, so I thought that I was ready to pack this coat up and send it back. And I feel a little bit disheveled now that I put it on over some knitwear because it does feel like it fits better. I'm not entirely certain whether it looks right on me though. So you're gonna have to let me know whether I'm gonna keep this or not. I'm gonna also be putting this up as a Reels. So if any of you feel very strongly about it, make sure you let me know on the Reels as well whether I should keep it because I am not, like I love the shape of it and I feel like it's a really classic coat. I need to give it a bit of a steam. And I believe it's a cashmere coat as well. So I think that's what's um, making it so expensive. But the only thing that um, wasn't working was the fur collar. I don't know if I'd wear the fur collar that much, but it's got little buttons here that are quite prominent, they're quite well seen. So let me know, this is definitely the vibe I was going for. I wanted a longer, smart, sophisticated, no hardware, warm, classic black coat. And I feel like this fits the bill, especially now that I've popped this very classic cream jumper underneath it. You are gonna have to let me know in the comments about this because I am not, I'm not sure, <laughs> I feel like, 
Ooh, I wasn't planning on keeping it. It was very expensive and now I'm not too sure, but let me know. <laughs> I felt like I put that on and it was like an instant yes. Like this as an all black outfit. Oh my goodness, yeah. This is an instant yes. I, I just feel, I feel fantastic in it. And you can wear this with leggings and boots and a black roll neck or a cream roll neck or even just this. And I feel chic. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Okay, good, 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 good. So it is now dark outside, but I have changed my outfit. This is definitely gonna be my outfit tomorrow as well. You know when you find something and it just feels instantly perfect, that is this jacket. Styling it, I had to be really careful because I didn't want it to look too trendy. I still wanted it to be quite classic. So I've gone with a classic Burberry check scarf, which I always think elevates a all black outfit. But I have changed just to go and get my hair done. I'm having my second Olaplex treatment put on, but you're gonna see me wearing this tomorrow as well because this just feels so wonderful. I love it so, so much. Yes, squeaky. Hello, hello. Yes, how's your baby? Right, I have just arrived in Toaster to head to Ruby at Brown's, my second Olaplex appointment. This is the first time I'm driving my car since um, someone sadly hit the wing mirror. That's one of the perils of living in the countryside is the narrow roads that usually you can end up hitting your uh, wing mirrors. Sadly, mine was a casualty. I wasn't driving it, Ali was, so it's all Ali's fault. No, I'm joking, we've already booked it in to get it fixed, but um, also, he's managed to somehow leave the light on in the back of the car, which I, I have no idea how. I can't turn it off because he was fitting the new puppy seat because I've got to take both of them to the vets tomorrow. Porter's got a jab and Barkley has a checkup. So I'm going to be a proper mum of two with these in the back tomorrow. I've got a busy day. So um, I'm going to crack on this evening, get my Olaplex on and head back to the house to hopefully snuggle in front of the TV before bed. Good morning everyone. It is a frosty and bright morning, although it doesn't look like it behind me. The sun is just coming up. The hun bun has gone, although I still have Olaplex on my hair. Ali is walking Barkley this morning, just down the road, and I am walking Porter, so Porter goes for longer. It's quite difficult juggling a puppy in terms of like normal walks, because obviously you've either got to carry them the entire way and just sort of put them down for five minutes here and there, which makes Porter's usual walks really small, uh, really slow. So we thought just to get Barkley going, Ali's gonna take him on his first sort of few weeks of walks just himself. I mean, cause they're just like thick as thieves anyway. I know that when they go on their walks together, they'll be fine. Where is he? Down there. This little one took a little bit of time to get started though, cause he's not used to walking um, with just me now. He's got very used to having the both of us, which um, he's spoilt rotten, so it took him a little bit of time, but we got going in the end. Today is not a particularly busy day in terms of like, I've got some work to do in the afternoon. The boys have to go to the vets, like I said, so that's gonna be interesting. And um, then I'm taking the team and my friend Nicole to uh, Soho Farmhouse for drinks. So we're all getting a taxi there and back to enjoy some drinks and a good old sort of catch up and chin wag and whatever together. So it should be quite a nice start to the weekend. I'm gonna miss these frosty mornings. It definitely felt yesterday like it was um, getting milder. I was talking to my neighbor over the fence and we were both saying, gosh, today it was, it was a lot milder. So those spring mornings are hopefully on their way as well because I will miss winter, but I am looking forward to spring. <laughs> that is for sure. So I am gonna get the boy walked in this glorious weather and uh, enjoy every moment of it <laughs> and then head back to the house, I think. If anyone remembers Psycho Sausage 
from <laughs> just the end of summer, this is the field where psycho sausage would take place. There's no um, sheep in here at the moment anymore. They will be, but they obviously have them in cycles around all of the different fields. And usually he just goes nuts in this field now, running around, runs off. Porter doesn't usually go further than sort of a few meters in front of us, but in this field, in this field is his um, theatrical debut where he runs and he rolls. He loves it. Little performer, aren't you? <laughs> the hun bun is back on. The puppies are herding behind me. I'm gonna go and get the car warming up, ready for their first venture. This is gonna be interesting to see how this goes, to be perfectly honest, because, yeah, <laughs> we're gonna see. <gasps> oh dear. Goodness me. Goodness me, it is so cold today. Look at you! <laughs> look at you in your little bed. You look so beautiful. Barkley, Barkley! Good boy. We are gonna head off, get some heating on in here. Heated seats. Should we put your heated seats on? Not that you're gonna feel it, but you're not shaking, are you? Okie dokie. Gates opening, and yamo. Look at those harumphs. Oh. Big harumph. Isn't he silly? Oh. Very silly. Well, that was <laughs> an eventful morning. I am now just, well, I've just dried my hair. I've used my new mask and my hair feels amazing, which is really good. What is this little baby hair situation? I've also done the Olaplex number six with three drops of um, number seven in each side, basically, to make it like more like nourishing. You can see that the Olaplex is stripping like the, the gloss and the um, like toner from my hair. So my hair is gonna look worse and worse before it looks better, but I am gonna give it a, um, Dry. I'm still using my GHD Helios. It's still my favorite hair dryer. But I found this in my beauty cupboard. This is from Silkenberry and this is Heatless Styling Sitch. Oh gosh. So this is posted. Um, this is all silk, which is probably going to be better for my hair. Although, is it going to be long enough? Because my hair is a little bit long now. Even Ruby yesterday was like, Oh my gosh, your hair is so long. So, I felt very smug. I might actually need a thicker clip than this though because my hair is thicker than that. But yeah, I've got a few things to try with you today. So I'm gonna try this out on my hair. I want to try heatless waves on my natural like texture of my hair because that would be revolutionary. But the only thing is, is that obviously I'm up today Gosh, I can't believe how like red that bottom of my hair is. Oh my goodness. This is gonna be a hard few weeks because I've still got two more Olaplexes to go. Okay, so you put this over your head like this and then you clip this in place like this from what I gather. And then you like grab bits of your hair and just fold it over. I'm gonna have to do this quite tightly. Now I would normally sleep with this in my hair. So yeah, I would normally sleep with this in my hair, but obviously I've had to wash off the Olaplex this morning. So I am gonna try and get it all up and like done, leave it, do my tan, do my makeup, and then um, see if it's worked, if, like if that's given it enough time to work basically so yeah let's start that again so you grab your hair like this and you wrap and you grab more if anyone does this and i, I can see that i'm like doing this wrong 
let me know <laughs> because I need all of the tips. Now you can obviously try this using your dressing gown tie. I tried it and it like moved and unraveled quite a lot. So this is supposed to not unravel, I think, but it's a good length. And then you secure it using the silk scrunches like so. See, look, it unravels. I wonder why that is. Because it's like, am I just being stupid or something? But like, I want it to stay like that so that it really like holds the curls, but it just doesn't want to do that. It just unravels for the most part. So this is all like straight under here. I don't really understand. Maybe I'm not doing it tight enough. Let's try this bottom part again. Still unraveling. Okay, we are gonna try the next side. So this is always more difficult, this side, because I'm like doing this back to front. But weirdly, when I did it with my dressing gown, tie this side came out better even though it was the like hardest side to do you know what I mean so I can already feel that that is going to unravel like why like that's even worse than the other side what on earth what am I doing wrong I need to like secure it more or I need to like allow it to unravel I mean, that's just not working at all. There is something that I am not doing right here. And I fear that my battery will run out before I find out what it is. Maybe I should just read the instructions. <laughs> Maybe that would be helpful. I literally give up. Well, I don't know whether I've solved the problem or what, but I've tied it behind. If you know why that's happening, I cannot, like my brain is not enough to work out why that's unraveling and how to make it not unravel. I'm gonna have to watch some tutorials. But anyway, we have lift off. It's held in place. We're gonna see how this goes. I've got a layer of fake tan on, excitingly. And the other thing that I've got new to show you is in a very, very heavy and spandangly Dior bag. So this arrived this morning and I think I know what, what it is. It'll be from the Dior Beauty team. And I'm imagining, if I am right, that this is the new, well, the newly formulated foundation that I worked on previously. And I have been very, very excited to give this a try and also give it a try with you because if there's one thing that I like to do is I like to see the finish of a product, like in real life. Oh, lovely box. This is a bit of Lydia. A lovely linen covered embossed box. So this is the uh, Dior Forever. Ooh. I'm very pleased to share with you our new generation of Dior Forever fluid foundations with a new formula reinforced in skincare and florality. Forever offers an 80% floral skincare base, 24 hour of long wear. We're gonna put that to the test. Long wear performance, sorry. <laughs> Long lasting, caring and beautifying, it is as close as it gets. A second skin that becomes one with your own. Available in two finishes, the iconic no transfer matte and the luminous glow, each in 42 shades. Everyone can find the foundation that corresponds perfectly to their needs. I instantly go for the glow. They've sent a few different shades, but I instantly am going for this one because I don't know. Well, I think the other ones are potentially, I don't even know if that, 3N, I think that was my color anyway. So we are gonna get this on our face. I don't usually wear liquid foundations that much anymore. And if I do, it's usually by Terry. So I'm gonna add a little bit more of the by Terry Brightening CC Serum. Et voila. And we are gonna give this a go. Color looks good. I think, do you know what? I'm not gonna go really heavy. So I'm just gonna pop some in my fingers and see how it goes on and then touch up. Oh wow, it is, it's high coverage again. Wowzers. I did not need a lot of that. <laughs> Where 
is a mole found there we go foundation brush now i love the concealer of this love the concealer of this and loved the foundation of this as well and then i can use a little bit more to cover up see the coverage is insane it has literally just covered the dark spot on my cheek perfectly obviously i've not brought it to life yet and i'm not going to do a full makeup tutorial with you today but i am going to let you know what i think so my shade was 3n now i'm going to get everything else on my face and we're going to see how this does prepare for the glow up because when you see me i'm going to be taking these out of my hair <laughs> et voila <laughs> hair is looking absolutely nuts but makeup is done so I'm wearing the Dior Forever Skin Glow in shade 3N and I'm using the, the Bonjour Paris VIP palette from By Terry. I just literally, this is pretty much the only palette I ever use nowadays because it's just got all of my colours. I've gone for like a pinky, mauvey, brownie colour. Really like it. Should we see how my hair has done? Because otherwise I'm going to have to do it with the tongs. I really hope this works. <laughs> Oh. I know I'm gonna have to, oh dear I'm not sure how this is gonna turn out I know I'm gonna have to like touch it up Ooh. I mean it's not looking terrible but is it gonna hold this is what we're gonna find out I mean, it doesn't look a lot different from when I do it myself. I don't think this side is going to be as good, to be honest. Well, I mean, it isn't the worst, is it? Now I just have to hope that it stays. I'm definitely going to have to touch up this front bit because at the moment it's not like... But wow, not so bad. Let's give it a touch up and, cause I'm happy with just touching it up. If I can just put my hair up like that, pff, I'm laughing. It's gonna save me hours. <laughs> it feels too good to be true. I mean, obviously you don't look particularly sexy when you're doing your hair like this. Like this is not what I'm gonna wear on like the nights where I'm, you know, hoping to be a little bit. <laughs> I'm not going to be there with my, like, silk tube over my head, but... So, that's a bit of touching up, admittedly, with my tongue. But I just saved myself an hour. Well, it doesn't take me an hour to do my hair, but, like, what feels like an hour when you're doing it? Oh my goodness. Now I have to see if this holds. So this is a race against time, basically. How's my foundation gonna do? And how is my hair gonna do? Because this is about to change the game for me. Wow. Well, I would say for the most part, that was a great success. I mean, I still need to learn how to like not twist it like not i need to learn how, how to stop it from twisting and i will always need to touch up around my face frame because i have so many like short bits like little tiny baby hairs and stuff but my life is now a million times easier than it was because i can just do this love it and my outfit for farmhouse friday is my kate blazer that i got from farfetch um, some Tala leggings, a Lily Silk cashmere roll neck, and Theory boots. And then I'm going to use one of my Hermes bags. One of the two, I think. Probably the bigger one. I don't know. Maybe the smaller one? Let me have a look. I feel like the smaller one will look a bit too trendy with this outfit, whereas I want to always look classic. So, Hmm. I am going to go in with, let's go with cedar violet because I've got a small bottle of it so I can pop it in my bag. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. 
Look at this herd of fluffies. Looking smooth there, Barkley. Barkley, good boy. Our house is like a farm, just full of animals. You wait till we get the chickens. That's next on my agenda. Morning, buddy. You ready for some food before mommy goes? Yes. Foodie, foodie. That is Carrie Grayson going out the door and getting in the taxi <laughs> with wine. We are heading to Soho Farmhouse now. So I'm dressed, ready to go. Uh, we're gonna meet Nicole there. Ali will be back in about half an hour for the dogs. They are around. <laughs> so let's get going. I don't know why I sounded like a children's TV presenter then. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I did, over the night, heatless waves last night, and I've got to be honest, I woke up and they'd all fallen out. <laughs> so one side was really lovely and like waved, and the other one was almost completely straight. So I just put it back in, showered, did my makeup, um, and then I touched it up, basically. So all I'm doing now is touching up waves. My hair's keeping the natural texture that it has, so it's a lot more like voluminous. <laughs> but, um, and it just feels nicer, and it's so much quicker. So I'd say I'm definitely a convert at the moment. Um, I'm looking still into how to master it. This is gonna be a learning process. I've never done this before. I've never um, not like fully heat styled my hair. So this is a new thing for me, but I'm really, really loving it. So you may well have a bit of a convert on your hands, but I think it's working well. Um, I'm just unpacking a box that arrived from Hello Petal. I've got more of her beautiful olive branches to pop in a vase of water. I've got some dried poppies, like the little poppy. I love these because they're like, um, but these are just a really lovely, like dried option at this time of year. We've got some thistle, we've got some roses that desperately need to go into some water. That's me because I've left them too long. And some beautiful twigs. So I'm gonna get these in some water. I had a lovely time last night. It was really, really lovely. Um, I had the mac and cheese at Soho Farmhouse and shared the cookie with Nicole. And then we had drinks in like our favorite little sidebar place where it's like, there's a fire and they often have like live music or like a DJ or something like that. And it was just a really lovely evening. And I finally managed to convince Carrie to join, hopefully. Fingers crossed. It will sort of come through because I just, I, I, even today I'm like looking at when I'm gonna go and have my massages and stuff like that. So yeah, so I'm gonna get these in some water and I've got another little um, order of things that I've been buying to show you because obviously I had some time off from shopping and um, just wanted a few little things in my wardrobe. Again, really lovely, classic, timeless uh, little pieces. So we're gonna get into that as well. Anywho, let's get you some water for the third time. <laughs> Every time I go somewhere, I hear the little bit of patter of sausage puppies behind me. Isn't that lovely? This is definitely not the display that I'm going for, but I can't find a vase that I want to display them all in because all of my vases are either being used or I've got pots in the places where it could go. But if you wanted to grab the olive uh, branches that Hello Petal does, which I just love what she does, she's so like, forward thinking in her like flower boxes that she does. I'll link her in the description box down below because it's so lovely having them de delivered but also going for something a bit more rustic like these olive branches. Oh, oh. hello Angel, you come to see your sister, don't do ye? Come on, Porty. Yes, it's a sausage, ah, Barkley, no. Barkley is learning that he doesn't bite his sister. Porty, come. The sausages don't understand that Lumi is very, very delicate. And sometimes she will play with them. Watch this, look at his tail, it starts blue. <laughs> She's like, not today, Satan. But they don't understand that she will only play with them when she wants to. Ah! When she wants to. Barkley, you are such a naughty little puppy but you are just learning everything goes in your mouth like a little baby yeah so 
Sometimes she will happily play, other times it's, it's an absolute no. But anyway, I'll link the lovely olive branches and her flower boxes in the description box down below. below? below. I'm not doing them justice at the moment because I need to find somewhere perfect for them to go and that can't be done under pressure. I'm gonna get into the final box of things that has arrived. And then what I'd really like to do today, I actually have the day all to myself, which is quite lovely. I want to take Porter on a different walk. There's a village that I want to just go and walk around nearby and I think that we're able to walk directly to the village so I might take him but I don't want to leave Barkley because Ali is at uh, golf today so I don't know whether to try and carry Barkley as well I bought a new carrier which is kind of like a sling which I think is actually going to be better than the Mutts and Hounds ones because Mutts and Hounds one goes on my arm but I, it obviously hasn't arrived yet I just found it on Amazon for like 10 quid and so he can just slot in there and then I can put him down and he can walk whenever he wants Anyway, anyway, I think that's what I'm going to try and do is get, get out, get some steps in, get some fresh air and just spend a lovely day outside, even though I'm on my own today. Like this doesn't happen often. So I kind of want to make the most of it because it's quite lovely. So Borty, we're going to get you dressed and Barkley, we're going to do the same. And we're going to go on a walk, the three of us, hopefully, if I can make it work. I'm worried about having Porter on a lead and also Barkley in a sling <laughs> while carrying him. So, the things that I also purchased, got them out already, but I got another Lauren Manugian, Manugian, Manugian cardigan because I live in my other one. This one is slightly lighter, like slightly more creamy and longer. I just love her pieces. They're very like um, minimalist and um, simplified, I think, in their design. They're not like overly done in any way, shape or form and they're like the perfect throw-on cardigan. Super snuggly, super warm and I'm really loving creams and blacks together at the moment. So an outfit like this that's comfortable but um, I've got leggings on and I can just throw this over and it instantly gives it a sort of chicer look. And I've actually also picked up a bit of a cream beanie as well to just go for that more tonal look. So really honing my blacks and my creams a little bit more because I just think black and cream are my favorite colors to wear. I just always think they look really elegant. So yeah, it's one of those pieces that you can kind of like belt as well. So you can kind of interpret it as you, as you wish. Right, this is the cardigan on. It's actually, I'd say a little bit lighter than my other Lauren Manugian cardigan. And the sleeves are slightly more practical as well. My other sleeves are so long on the other one. So this is a slightly more lighter weight, probably better for the spring, um, the winter spring transitional season. It's also slightly longer line. So it works really well over like leggings and stuff like that. I just love this look. I think that it's quite a casual, but beautiful and still, I don't wanna say elegant too much, but it's, it's simplistic and I feel comfortable in it, but I also feel like I've, I have made a bit of an effort even though I absolutely haven't. Really lovely with black accessories. I love a cream and, and black color palette at the moment. And so this was a perfect choice. I, I think that you can't go wrong with her pieces. They, they are so wearable for every style. And I think that that's wonderful because when you look at the brand, it's quite a modern, brand but actually to see it work in so many different styles is really wonderful and then this was the splurge this is the uh this is one of the zimmerman dresses from their postcards collection that's out at the moment and it's beautiful absolutely beautiful i've not tried it on yet but i don't know if you remember i've got that other zimmerman splurge dress and i love it it is the most elegant dress i feel like a million dollars when I wear that Zimmerman dress. It's the ruffly one with the sort of quite A-line. I wore it prancing round the, what's it called? The, <laughs> the water fountain um, at Master Chabran and I felt amazing and I loved it so much. I just always try and find excuses to wear it. So I really wanted to try this one because this one has a slightly more summery feel to it. Um, it's got almost like woven raffia uh, scalloped cuffs and beautiful woven buttons as well. It needs a good old steam, but I loved the way that it looked. So I'm obviously, you know, trying all of these on for you. But yeah, there's something about the much more like structured and sadly more expensive Zimmerman dresses that I just fall for. 
But the thing is with them is that I find, and if you're like me, like Zimmerman is such a hugely popular brand and it's so lovely to see like lots of people wearing the, the pieces and feeling amazing in them. When you go for these ones, you don't necessarily see as many people wearing them. So if you want something a bit more unique and it's within your budget, then these are really, really good options for just something that feels a little bit more special. So very dramatic entrance there, but um, this is the Zimmerman dress on. I just walked downstairs because I had to get Ali to do the cuffs up on this because they actually have zips. Rather than covered buttons, they have zips, which are actually quite seamless to keep them nice and tight on the arms. Um, and Ali was like, oh, that is a very, very nice dress. Um, I did just point out to him, I was like, are you, are you sure it's not too similar to the one that I have with the ruffles? Because I think if I had to pick one, I'd pick the one with the ruffles. And it is a similar fabric. I do love the detailing to the hem and the sort of warmer tones to it because it goes super well with my warmer items too but I think maybe it's too similar. And I've also seen an Erdem dress, which is really nice. So maybe I'll get the Erdem dress instead. Who knows? But let me know what you think of this one. Um, the beanie that I got is from Kate. I have a lot of cream beanies and a lot of them don't suit me because of my head. And I thought, <laughs> hopefully this one will. The branding of this is absolutely beautiful as well. Look at that, look at that detail. So I popped you up a little bit higher for the beanie because I feel like you need to kind of see it, but I think there's been no sort of like hiding the fact that I've been in the market for a cream beanie and I've bought quite a few and my end peel one, as lovely as it was, just never really suited me. This one, I feel like has the right vibe. I didn't want a pom-pom one. I wanted like a, just quite a smart cream beanie that just goes with all of my outfits, especially if I'm wearing something like all black with a cream jumper underneath it. I think it works really, really well, so. Yeah, this is more for like comfort, comfort casual, but still elegant. <laughs> That's what we're going for here. <laughs> I just think it's a really, really lovely brand that I'm liking, and I know I spoke about it earlier, but it's like, it feels like it's got quite a lot of trend stuff, and then also a lot of classic pieces, and that blazer I feel incredible in, and that is one of the things I'll always say is that I want to feel amazing in clothes, and I don't care what people think I might look like in them, as long as I feel amazing. That's a really really lovely thing it's why I like wearing dresses and then sometimes I'll wear something quite tailored because I just feel fantastic in it next up we have some shoes and I actually might purchase another pair of shoes because I've seen them but this is from a brand I've never purchased from before but again it was for this more tonal look um, I don't know if these are particularly me and they look a lot nudier but like quite an awkward nude in person, so I'm not sure if these are actually going to work for me. I liked them because they reminded me of my theory boots that I wore yesterday. Because they've got this like more elasticated kind of like woven thing, it, they make your legs look really elegant because it follows the contours of your ankles and your leg. But I don't want them to be too trendy. I don't want these to look like those like Balenciaga boots or anything like that because that's definitely not like a classic in my style. So I have to be really careful. I really liked the, the theory ones because they had the pointed, the pointed toes, but we'll see. I just wanted to be able to wear like an all cream outfit and have the boots that go with them as well, but I don't want them to look just, I know I have a specific style in mind for this. <laughs> so we'll have to style those up and see how we get on. So I popped the, I think it's port and pear boots on. I think that they are quite possibly a little bit too cool and a bit too edgy for me. I think it's the, the size of the sole versus the round toe as well. Whereas my theory ones, they have the quite, like it's a, a bit more of a tapered toe. I just think they look a little bit better. These look a little bit like boots that you'd wear with a hazmat suit. <laughs> I think if you are one of those cool girls that dresses like very, very, totally and then maybe this is for you but I think that these are probably not not for me but let me know let me know in the comments if you like them I, I don't know why they feel so different to be honest aside from the tone they're very very similar but they just maybe it's the color I think probably it's just the color and it's just it's not meant for me <laughs> and then the final is an utter classic like I've had my eye on these for such a long time these are a little pair of these 
and I wear my nude version, like this sort of peachy nude version, so much. You can see where I'm going with these. So these are the Kate, where are my ones? I've got these ones down here. I think they're the same shoe. Yeah. So basically, this, yeah, they're the exact same shoe, but in different colours um, and different tones. This is the really, th the good thing that I love about Le Bhutan shoes is that these also cater to different skin tones as well. So this is like my barely there, like, classic option and then this is when I want to wear it with my Berenia leather it's kind of the closest I could get and in all honesty I think I've done extremely well with this I wanted to be able to wear this with my suit from Sister and Hicks and just have like really lovely tan accessories that match I love a matching shoe and bag some people don't but I do I love a matching shoe and bag I, I just think it looks really lovely and pulled together and I'm so over the moon with the colour of these they're absolutely perfect and I know I spoke about them before but they're not like the old Le Boutins that were extremely uncomfortable I mean they're still not a comfortable shoe like it's not wearing a pair of slippers so let's not like let's lower our expectations <laughs> but wow did they used to be like actual torture devices whereas I can wear these quite happily for an evening and hate myself the next day but not actually want to like remove my feet because they hurt so much but i'm so happy with how these look they're perfect absolute perfection okay these shoes are an absolute win for me there's nothing more i really need to say about them except for the fact they are perfect <laughs> and they are the perfect color for the bag and exactly what i needed for a classic tan pump in my wardrobe so Absolute win, so much so I've ordered a pair of Nono Blahniks that are flat versions of these so that if I don't want to wear heels I can wear beautiful pointed toe tan flats as well, so win-win! <laughs> and these are things that like I've been considering for a while and I've had like in my basket and I've been looking at and making sure that I'm making the right decision. So um, I'm really happy with this. The, obviously this dress, I'll try it on if it's too similar on the other one it will go back because it's just not necessary i think that that dress is so wonderful and i would just wear it every day if i could anyway i'm gonna get myself dressed for a lovely walk and um take the boys out because it's just it's not the most beautiful of days but it doesn't need to be a beautiful day to be lovely outside so i'm gonna wrap up warm and take them out good boys <gasps> porter gently come on <laughs> yes! Come on, Porty! It is a very Winnie the Pooh end to the day. Windy, but feeling like spring. Barclay's asleep in there. <laughs> it is a windy one. Woohoo!